what do you call this? Uh, Bible verses. Bible verses. Okay, so prepare your Bible verses. But but I prepared this. I didn't intend to share that a while ago. I prepared um, this one okay, to share tonight. And that's something that many of you are familiar with. And that's First Chronicles 4.10. First Chronicles 4.10, which is commonly referred to as the prayer of Jabez. Okay. Um, Jabez. Huh? <laughs> the prayer of Jabez. Jabez. And Jabez called on the God of Israel saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed and enlarge my coast and that thine hand might be with me and that thou wouldest keep me from evil that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. First Chronicles 4.10. Okay, praise the Lord. Okay, thank you very much. Keep on memorizing those verses. God does use them for us personally to encourage us and grow us, deepen our faiths. And at the same time, um, not only does he give it to us for us to consume, uh, oftentimes he, give it, he gives it to us as well for us to share and serve to others, okay, as their food, okay? Um, we, later on, before I'm gonna give you time, we're gonna, we're gonna spend time praying for a lot of people who are not feeling well, and we have a lot, quite a few people we know personally that we need to pray for, okay? So I'll give you a little time later on. Please remind me. I'll, we'll, probably, we'll probably stop around 925. So this is a short lesson that we're gonna have because we're just concluding the lesson on peace, but before we continue, um, can I ask how many of you, just a sort of a review of the past points we've had, the first three points we had. How many of you remember the kinds of peace we've been talking about um, in relation to God, the vertical peace we were talking about? Yeah, anybody can answer the three. Unmute yourself, go ahead. Don't look at your notes, try not to look at your notes. Peace with God, okay. peace of God, Mm -hmm. Peace from God. There you go. Okay. okay. So, so, what do you understand? What do you understand about the peace from God? It talks about. Oh, is that still me? Wait, if, if you, hold on. You know, I can't. If you, I have to find my notes. Okay. Okay. So it's okay. So again, um, the emphasis of the peace of God is has to do with the source. Where does true peace come from? It's something that God has already showed us that it, he has given it. He has already exemplified that through both the Gentiles and the Jewish people. Um, it is something that he started. It is something that grows. It is something that needs to continue in our lives, that peace from God. And then we talk about the peace with God. And that peace with God has to do with relationship. It has to do with, the first one has to do with the source. The second one has to do with relationship. And the reason why that is very important, once again, is because of a truth that the Bible teaches that we ought to be very wise in the way we, we tell others about it, especially unbelievers, we, as much as possible. Um, that's something that um, people who share the gospel have avoided because of the possible offensiveness of the truth. And you know, we have to be very careful as well. We have to see uh, what kind of ground we are sowing into if it's a ground that's able to receive that kind of truth or not and what is that that without christ in a life of a person we were at hostility or at enmity or we were enemies of god that's the reason why we needed to have this reconciliation it's a reconciliation it's um again i'll talk to you more about it but then the next one is a peace of god so when we have this peace with god what comes to us it is the peace of God is something that cannot be touched by the world. It is something that we cannot explain with the words available to us in whatever language. And that's a divine kind of peace. We have control whether or not we will exercise it. We will let it, we will appropriate that because it's something that the spirit of God is already producing in you and me, okay? So I want you to think about, I want you to think about uh, no, there's a lot more okay but um but oh late, later okay so now so that's a vertical that's a vertical side of it a piece so, but when you have that vertical piece between you and god and the peace that god has given you which is the peace of god the god kind of peace there is no way 
there is no way that it would stay in us. It has to be exercised and applied in a horizontal sphere as well. And the Bible teaches both. Both are very important in the way the Bible represents them to us. We talk about peace with God. Now we talk about peace with others, okay? Or peace with, in your outlines, peace with each other. And you see the first verse that we have there. Um, it's very telling. There's something, as I said, I, I, this is going to be a short lesson, but I mean, I may have, because this is a passion that I have, I believe that, that FCF definitely is very strongly convicted about. That's the reason why there are a lot of things we do differently when it comes to like visitors and inviting fellow believers and all of those sorts of things is because of our stand regarding this. Okay, so regarding peace with each other, Mark 9, everybody go there, go ahead. And again, we're still living, we're still reading the New Living Translation. Mark 9, verse 50. Ryan, would you please read that one for us? Mark 9, 50. Mark 9, 50. Salt is good for seasoning, but if it loses its flavor, how do you make it salty again? You must have the qualities of salt among, among yourselves and live in peace with each other. Okay, all right. So uh, kindly read it again, please. Salt is good for seasoning, but if it loses its flavor, how do you make it salty again? You must have the qualities of salt among, among yourselves and live in peace with each other. Okay, praise God. So this is something that, this is something that um, many people have now realized when it comes to like us being called by God as, you know, many of us are familiar with Jesus and our Lord's precious words about us being the light of the world and being the salt of the earth, light of the world, salt of the earth. After he gave that, uh, that very famous sermon on the Mount, um, the very first part of that was the Beatitudes. And then he followed it up by this, you are the light of the world, you are the salt of the earth. And here, when it comes to the salt, it is applied here again, but in a surprising twist or something that the writer, or that the, the Lord puts in there, is to put peace in relation to somehow it within the context of our saltiness, okay? Mm -hmm. you, you must have the qualities of salt among yourselves and live in peace with each other. So the context could be very well among believers, but we know that God also teaches us, later on you're gonna see that in other verses, that, that, that peace that he's talking about it's not only to be enjoyed within the family of God or the family of faith, but that peace that he talks about has to be enjoyed, or we have to exercise that and pursue that among ourselves as human beings, okay? the entire humanity. Now, it is true because most of the time when you talk about um, the saltiness, you talk about preservation. It is a preserving agent. It's something that you, have, you and I have heard when when a message is presented or preached regarding you being the light of the world or us being the salt of the earth, one thing that they point out right away is the, pres the preserving quality of the salt. And when we are presented that often, it is in relation to the moral decadence. And it's something that I know that the, we cannot deny that, that the world is really galloping down really hastily in a downward spiral towards decadence, towards disintegration, towards immorality, okay, towards rottenness. That's where the world is going. There's no doubt about it. The Bible predicts that as well, that that's something that's going to happen in the last days. And when we think about those things, we think about us being the salt of the earth, it, it makes so much sense. Why? because rottenness to avoid that somehow the preserving agent is salt so right away we make the connection and um, and as i said like this this is a song by scott wesley brown entitled like this little child and this part of part there of the song that i know did cr have or create a conviction in me that was very strong and deep during those first times that I was hearing that song because it was a sad commentary of what was going on in the world today. What was that? 
there's a part of the song that says, and fools, I didn't say that, that's, that's a part of the lyrics, okay? So it says, and fools who march to win the right to justify their sin. You see the description there? And fools who march to win the right to justify their sin. Every nation that has fallen has fallen from within. And then he gives a very assuring follow-up there. He goes, yet in the midst of this darkness, there is a hope, a light that burns. This little child, our only hope, was born the King of Kings. Something like that. Of course, he was referring to the Lord Jesus Christ. But we are the body of our Lord. You and I are not separated from God. He is the head. We are the body. So it's not blasphemous to say that we are in this generation or in this world. We are the hope of this world as we represent our head, as we represent God. That's the reason why Jesus himself said it. Okay, you are the salt. He didn't say, I am the salt. He said, you are the light. Jesus says, I am light, but you are light as well. Okay, so that's his preservation. And that is very true. When it comes to the moral decadence of the world, we are the preserving agents. But the surprising twist I said that Jesus put here in these words have to do with peace as well in relation to salt. How can that be? And many of us have, have, have often forgotten that when we talk about the last days, the concentration, again, of preservation and the concentration of the last days and the destruction of the last days is that inner rottenness, the inner decadence that causes the, the, the breakdown of society, that causes the breakdown of the nation, that causes the collapse of a certain uh, empire because of the moral collapse. Okay, so that's very understandable. But have we somehow forgotten that the reason why the world will, will be destroyed is because of wars? fights, battles, okay? So it's not one or the other. The Bible creates to us, it gives us a very clear picture that both will be playing in the last days. Moral decadence, corruption, and I believe in all my heart that the battles and the wars and the divisions and the fightings and then fightings and and the destruction that will be caused by them are birthed from the moral collapse of the people and the leaders of the nations. That's the reason why we're going to be brought to this destruction of the earth brought by wars and these fights. Okay, so that's the reason why now we're given this new perspective about being dissolved. What is that? Not only are you going to be preserving this society from moral decadence, you will be preserving society from the fights and the battles and wars. What do you mean by that? You and I as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ are being called to be agents of peace. As much as possible to avoid hostilities and to avoid wars. And that's something that is very clear again in that verse. But there's another verse I'd like us to look at. Because there's another um truth or factor I want us to touch. Romans 12, 18, who was one of the first people who came in here? Leanne, will you please read Romans 12, 18? Let's all go there. Okay, let's all go there, Romans 12, 18. And when you're ready, make sure you unmute yourself. I don't like this one. Romans 12, 18. Do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. Romans 12, 18. Okay. Romans 12, 18. Okay. Good. Let me read it to you. Let me read it to you in the Amplified as well, because it's a word that I find very endearing for me in Romans 12, 18. It says, in, in the translation that Liam read, it says, do everything you can. In... In the Amplified, it is rendered as if possible, if possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone, okay? So we'll leave it at that for now. Another verse is Ephesians chapter 4, 
verse 3. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 3. Who's there who's not from the family? Okay. Let me see. Ada, would you please read that one for us? Everybody go to Ephesians 4, verse 3. And let's read that one. Got it. I'm flipping it right now. Philippians. Ephesians. Yeah. Ephesians what? I'm sorry. Four. Four. Three. Verse three. So my Bible is NIV. Is that okay? Or do you want me to do it on my... Do That's, it fine. NLP? That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Three. Uh, make every effort to keep the unity of the, of the spirit through the bond of peace. Okay. So again... Uh, what I want to emphasize, there are two things. There's, there are lots, lots of truths here. But what I want to emphasize is the first one that I shared to you a while ago, which is the word, the word, if possible. Okay? If possible. Um, that tells us, that tells us that peace is not always going look. to be possible. Can you notice that? Okay, that tells us although we are being encouraged and urged okay to try our best do the very best of again i'm going to talk to you about that as well but it actually starts out also by saying if possible that means to say peace will not always be possible and and you know people like this don't you uh, for some people for some people and this is something that is very prevalent in our society for some people peace will only be possible if we will be subjugated, if we will agree with everything in their position or in their belief, otherwise peace will not be possible. So it's gonna be uniformity. Peace will only be possible if we will agree with everything they say. But if not, then peace will not be for you. And this is something, as I said, it's the kind of peace that is brought by uh, coercion, by force, by intimidation, and again, by subjugation or uniformity. Everybody has to be the same. God never created us to be that way, okay? Um, having a dissenting voice is not a bad thing. That's how you find the truth. Probably not a dissenting voice, but somebody who questions. It's something that I've already uh, imbibed in the heart of each one of you who have been under our discipleship, I, I place that and I've encouraged everybody to have that kind of position when you're learning, even in a Bible study like this, in, a, in things that I even teach on the pulpit or in our Bible study. What is that? Search, be like the Bereans or the Bereans, okay? Who, who, who listened, who believed, but then they searched the scriptures. The way we find out the truth about certain matters is to ask questions. It's encouraged in God's word for us to search the truth. And searching or seeking involves asking questions. Or not, we'll just be blind followers. That's not what the Bible asks us to do. Jeremiah 29, 13. And ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. It is a sincere seeking. And God wants us to do that. So... Um, let's do the best that we can at this what it's saying, but do not be disappointed. Do not be frustrated when you're trying to do the best that you can to have peace. There will be people who will not abide by your expectations. Okay. And you cannot force that as well to other people. So, but the beautiful thing about it is if, um, what do you call this? If peace is not always possible, the good news about that is it's possible for some. Okay, if it's not possible, if it's not always possible, there are possibilities. Again, I believe with all my heart that um, if there is any group of people, as I said, when it talks about everybody, it, it may be referring to everyone, not just the believers. But if there is a group of people, and now again, this is something that's very strongly um, a conviction in my heart is that if there is any group of people where in peace should be very visible and successful, it ought to be the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. It ought to be the body of Christ. The sad thing though is, and you know where I'm going with this, 
the sad thing though is and, and re, why do you say that pastor um it's because like the bible said the reason why we could have peace and unity and oneness is because we have one god we have one lord we have one faith we have one baptism we believe 98 percent of the bible okay like 98 percent of the scriptures we believe the same the only thing we don't believe among all the thousands of denominations is two percent two percent of the of the scriptures and those two percent represents what it represents the peripheral or the disputable matters in the bible so that's the reason i why we should be the one group of people who should be very much united the problem is we are one of the most divided entities in the world in fact um when you're trying to share the gospel to other religious groups i'm going to i'm not going to mention the specific one but one of the most specific like religious groups in the world one of their greatest accusations against christians is if you have the truth why are you so divided okay it's not a good testimony i know it talks about freedom of thought but our disunity especially it's okay to be different see i i don't mind the difference what makes it what makes it difficult and less convincing is not only that we're different from each other not only do we have distinctions we attack each other we have this friendly fire going on in the body of christ and that's something that god never never encourages he discourages that he is against that Amen. so it's again that's something we got to do it's possible and if it's possible with other people how much more possible should it be in the body of christ okay and if you look at the verse again it says there um like leon talks about read about how it did start it if um it's like do the best that you can how did how did it go leon yeah romans 12 in nlt do all do all that you can okay in ephesians 4 3, all you can. there you go do all you can so we talk about the possibility now we talk about responsibility do all you can so the question i have is when we are not at peace with people and i'm talking about family members i'm talking about the church i'm talking about your neighbor i'm talking about the person you may have a court case against or with have you done everything to keep the peace? Have you done, have we done everything? Because peace is not supposed to be initiated. We, as, listen carefully, as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, we are not asked by God or encouraged or commanded by God to expect peace to be initiated by others. This is a personal responsibility requiring personal initiation. And that, that may be true, but she's also a believer. Then that means you say it's a demand. It's a demand that God has from your wife as well. So let you in a, you know, you don't, you don't like you initiate. The Bible says you initiate, you know. No, it's our personal, our own responsibility. We initiate it. We do not demand others to initiate it. Even if they're fellow believers, all of us stand and falls on our own. We have to initiate that piece. So when you have something going on, when there's a misunderstanding and you're not in a peaceful relationship with someone right now, you got to ask yourself, and that's something we have to do. We ask ourselves, have I done everything that I could? Without compromise, without compromising um, righteousness, have we done everything that I could? Okay, so let me move on because I said I'm, I'm going to spend time praying. Okay. Um, let me see. Hebrews 12. I'm just going to read it to you. Okay. Hebrews 12, 14. Okay. It's living translation. Your living translation. It says, work at living in peace with everyone and work at living a holy life. For those who are not holy will not see the Lord. I want you to see the emphasis on work, working on it, working on it. And then in 1 Peter 3, 11, it says, turn away from evil and do good. Search for peace and work to maintain it, okay? So uh, I will end with that. Basically, I would say, 
if you want peace with other people, it takes work to have it, it takes work to maintain it, and it works to persevere in it. Got it? If you want to have peace with others, to live in peace with others in whatever setting, church, home, family, workplace, school, playground, whatever it may be, you got to, we have to work on it. We have to work to maintain peace and we have to work to persevere in it. Meaning to say backbiting is not working towards peace. Slandering is not working towards peace. Creating scandals is not working towards peace. Okay, so, and always think about people. It's something that, it's something that I like to leave to you as a principle because a lot of you, and it's something, there was, there was we attended a funeral um, and, and, um, and I'm not I'm getting, I'm gonna be too specific in my example. But you know how you know how some people uh, suddenly come up with uh, criticisms about songs, praise and worship, and you see that a lot of those on YouTube they criticize songs or criticize other people or criticize words that a preacher use or just criticize a fellow believer because of the lyrics, because of words, because of their actions, because of a process, because of a procedure, or their ways of doing things and all sorts of things. So. When, when you get tempted with a potential to possibly react that way, this is what I want you to ask yourself, a principle. What is that? Is there any possibility that the word he used could be taken in a way that it will be scriptural? Is there any possibility that the act he did could be taken in such a way that it makes sense, that it has a merit on its own. So instead of looking at the negative right away and saying it's wrong, look at the positive and create the unity among you. John 17, you know, 11 and 22 are the beautiful words of our Lord Jesus Christ that has a very big space, a place in my heart. When Jesus cried to the Father, Father, let them be one as you and I are one. May we be the answer to Jesus' prayer. And I pray that this is something that we will take seriously, not just as a knowledge, but as something that we will live with and live in and live for. Okay, so I'll end with that. I'll give, uh, I'll give us time to pray. Okay, God bless you guys.